Hello and welcome to the second of these four short videos that explain about the sample OTBI dashboards and reports that I've posted on Customer Connect. My name is Caroline Gladwin and I work as a solution consultant in the Oracle UK HCM team. In this second video we'll be looking at how the dashboards are laid out and the prompts that they use. We'll then be looking at how charts and tables are displayed before finishing by looking at some drill to detail reports with the use of some multiple views. So at the end of the first video, you'll have been in a position where you'll have imported the content and configured it to your own data. The purpose of this video is to have a quick look at some of the display options that have been used to give you some ideas for the reports and dashboards you'll be creating. You'll have noticed that all of the dashboard pages have a standard format. So down the left hand side, we have a dashboard prompt and we have the ability to reset the values using the button at the bottom. On the right hand side, we have a textual title and then below that we have a number of metrics and reports that give further detail about the data. Let's have a look at how those dashboard pages are set up. If I choose Edit Dashboard, then we can see the basic layout. So you can see on the left hand side here I've got a column and I've specified this as having a fixed width. So if I go to the column properties, you can see that I've fixed it at 180 wide. Within that, I then have a section, and what I've done with that is I've actually formatted the section to have the specific background colour that matches the rest of the BI page. That's optional whether you want to do that or not. The other thing I've done is I've said that the section is not collapsible, which means that that content will always display on the dashboard page. And then within that section, I've put the prompt, and it's the same on all of these pages, the same structure is used. If we have just a brief look at how the prompt has been set up, then we've taken advantage of some of the options on the functionality for the prompt. So here we can see the different columns that are selected in this particular prompt. And I haven't selected any of the new column checkboxes, so the prompts display all the way down the side of the page. I've also chosen to have the label above the prompt, and the way that we do that is by using the properties on the display and choosing to place the label above the prompt. That's also where I specify the title, which I've just put as selections. I've also said that the width of all the prompts should be fixed at 120 to make sure that it doesn't scroll within the fixed width column. The final thing I've done on most of the pages is for each of the items within the prompt is I've specified that its values and available values should be limited by all of the other values in the prompts. So if, for example, I picked a particular business unit, it would only show me, for example, the legal employers or the locations or the person types that reflect that particular business unit. It's very useful in guiding your users to make val valid selections to have that limit values option switched on. So that's how the dashboard prompts are set up. Let's have a look at a couple of other things. In terms of the dashboard pages, at the moment, they haven't got any links on any of the reports to allow the end user to, for example, export the data or maybe publish it to a briefing book. It's very easy to switch on those dashboard links. If we come back into editing it, we can choose the Edit Tools option here and choose Dashboard Properties. And within the Dashboard Properties, one of the things you can select are the Dashboard Report links. So, for example, if I want an Edit, a Print, an Export, and an Add to Briefing Book option below every report on the dashboard, I simply switch them on here, click on OK, OK again, and now when I save and run my dashboard, it will have those links displayed. It tends to be personal preference whether you like to have those links available or not, but that's how you add them if you wish to deliver that to your end user. So if we have a look at this Headcount by Gender report, this is using something called a waterfall layout. And if I edit this report, we can have a look at some of the attributes that have been set. So here we are now within the editor, within the compound layout. And if I go to the properties button, you can see here that I can specify the actual size of the chart. I can also decide whether or not there's a legend. And in terms of the style, this is where I can pick the fact that the style is a rectangle, and that gives that flattened look to the colours. I've also chosen to not display any lines in the plot area by just specifying that they should be white. And finally, I've chosen to show the data labels all the time. The way that I do that is using the Titles and Labels tab 
and coming down here to the data markers option and switching that on to be always available. So that gives us the look and feel that we have on the waterfall charts, the bar charts and the pie charts. So no grid lines, the numbers always displayed and the flat look on the colours. You'll notice in this report I'm also taking advantage of the column selector and I'd recommend that you become very familiar with this option in building reports because it allows you to deliver a whole load of flexibility in your reports. You may have some users who want to look at this data by gender, but you might have other people who want to look at it by some of these other attributes. And by using a column selector, it reduces the number of reports you have to create and maintain. Now, the other thing we might want to do in terms of charts is to actually control the colors based on the data that's being displayed. And one of the reports in this sample actually uses that technique. So if I just go up to my favorites and choose the performance document status summary report, I can show you that example. The idea behind this report is that it allows us to page through different business units and see the current status of the performance process. But what I want is, irrespective of how many volumes I'm displaying, I always want, for example, the completed status to show in green and the in-progress status to always be this lilac colour. If I page through the report, you can see that that's what's happening as the data gets redrawn. Now, in order to get the chart to display in this way, what we need to do is we need to go into the properties of it. And the, the setting that you need to look at is the Style tab. So here we can see the Style and Conditional Formatting option. If I click on that, you'll notice that I've set up some conditional formatting and that's based on the performance document status. So here we can see an example of how I can closely control the colors being displayed based on the data that's within the report. You may want to update these for your own values, or you may just want to use this technique in other reports that you're creating. Now moving on from chart displays, there are a couple of things that we've done in terms of the textual information. So again, let me open up another favorite report, which is the career statement report. This is available on the profiles tab within the dashboards. Now within the career statement report, what we've been able to do is to update the definition so that HTML data displays without all of the tags. And the way that you can do that is by going to the criteria tab and updating the column properties. So you can see here my career statement if I go to the column properties and go to data format, I simply have to override the default and tell the system to treat that text as HTML. And then the information is displayed without the tags being visible. Now the other thing you can do on textual reports is to enable right mouse click to your end users. On the right mouse click, there can be different pieces of functionality depending on what options you've enabled. So if I come up here to my Analysis Properties button, we can see the second tab is called Interactions. And I can check the box at the top to make available all of the right mouse interactions that are available in the system. Or I can switch them on and off selectively. These drive what a user has available to them when they're looking at a report and they do a right mouse click. So here, for example, I'm back in my Career Statement report, and if I do a right mouse click, we can see that I've got certain columns available to me to then interact that with that report in the way that I want to. The final thing I'll show you in terms of some of the tabular information is an example where we've replaced the data with an icon to reflect some kind of conditional formatting. So if I open up this report here called the Languages Report, then what we've done within this report is replaced whether people can speak or read or write a particular language with an icon. So here we can see we've done it on the first column, which indicates whether or not they're a native of that particular language or country. The way that we do that is by again going to the criteria tab and updating the column properties on that native column. So here we see the column. Again, we can go to the column properties, this time the conditional format, and we can see here that I've simply defined a condition that says when native is false, for example, then we basically put a red cross, and when it's true, we'll put a green tick. There are lots of images available to you to include in your reports 
to reflect different conditions that you might want to highlight. So it's not necessarily just traffic lighting, but you can take advantage of some of the other images that are available by bringing them in using this conditional format tab. So that's some examples of some of the things that we've done in terms of charts and tables. I would definitely recommend that you explore all of the reports that are provided to you to have a look at some of the different styles of layouts that are available to you. So just to give you a couple of examples that you might want to consider, here we can see a pipeline funnel chart. So this is a display that works very well where you're moving people through a process. And we can see here the different stages of my succession planning process and how many people I've got available to me at different stages in that. And again, I can choose to use the play option at the top. Now for any of you unsure how to create that paging option at the top, that's simply by dragging the item into the sections of the report and making sure that you switch on this button called display as slider. As well as a funnel, one of the other displays that you might want to think about using is called a trellis chart. And this tends to work very well where you have a high volume of data to be displayed. So here, if we go back to the summary layout on our competencies that we actually looked at in the first video, then this report is displaying the total number of employees that have the different types of competencies. And then the second trellis is actually showing those same people, but this time split down within a pie chart by their different levels of proficiency. So both of these are created using the trellis option. We can see here it's available in the views and we can use either simpler or advanced. Again, I would recommend that you have a look at this display type where you have this style of requirement for displaying a high volume of data, but in a simple format that makes it easy for people to understand. That completes our look at how tables and charts are displayed within the sample reports. To finish off this particular video, we're just going to take a brief look at some of the drill reports that are set up within the environment and also how we utilise multi-view reports to, to, dis, to provide different displays within the dashboard. So just to pick up that first point, you can see here that within this competencies report I've actually got four separate compound layouts. Now many people don't know that you can actually create additional compound layouts so here we can see an example and if I wanted to add another one, then I simply click on this Create Compound Layout button and it will add an additional tab onto the screen and allow me to drag any of the content that I've got defined within this report into this particular layout. So here you can see it's defaulted adding me the title, but I could, for example, pick up one of the charts and drag that in to give me a different layout from the ones I've already got. But why would I want to do that? Well, it's very simple. If I just go back to my dashboard view, so let me go back to my sample dashboards and let me pick the skills tab. On this report or on this dashboard page, it looks as if I've got lots of different reports all grouped together. But in reality, all of this information is coming from a single report. So I only have to define and maintain a single report. What I've done within the dashboard page, if I edit it, is I've chosen to display a different compound view each time I've brought that report onto the dashboard. So here we can see competencies with highly skilled summary. If I look at this one and choose show view, that one is showing the summary layout. The same report is displayed below it on the dashboard, but this time if I go and show the view, then it's showing me the breakdown view. Similarly, as I carry on, it's displayed for a third time but this time it's the detailed layout view. So it basically, if you have data which you want to display in multiple ways on a dashboard all at the same time, then by far the best way to do it is to create a single report, create three compound layouts, bring it onto the dashboard page three times, and then define each entry to point to one of those views. And in that way, you're only creating and maintaining a single report. Now I mentioned that we were using drill reports, so let's have a look briefly at how those are set up. If I go into my headcount metrics drill report, this style of report and all of the metrics on all of the different tabs 
are actually using a layout called performance tiles, which can be very useful where you want to simply display a single number for your users to have a look at. So here we can see the detail behind that. Now the way that the drill report is defined is by creating the detail report that you want to navigate to first. So this is actually the headcount metrics drill report that I want to navigate to. What I then need to do in the high level summary report is to define that I want to drill to that particular place. So here if I edit, uh, edit my summary report called headcount metrics then you'll see that on each of those metrics I've defined a drill path to that detail report that we were just looking at. So here for example on the full-time equivalent if I look at the column properties and then the interaction tab then here is my drill defined. It's defined as a drill to or it's defined as an action link um, and it's called drilling to another piece of BI content. So here we can see I'm navigating to BI content, I simply pick the drill report from the catalogue and then this report will interact in that way for the end user. So if I come back to my dashboard then we can see that information and the drill being available. Now just before I do that and go back to the dashboard one of the things that's useful to be able to do on any of these metrics is to have a zero displayed instead of a null value if there's no values to be returned. So here we can see on the data format tab that I've actually defined a custom data format. The first part before the first semicolon shows how the data should display if it's positive, the second part is if it's negative, and the third part is if it's null. So that can be a helpful technique if you're providing dashboard prompts where people may end up with a selection that returns zero rows. If I go back and just briefly show you that in action, I'll open up the sample OTBI dashboards one final time, and here's my organization page, here are my metrics at the top, and I'm able to then click on a metric, be provided with my drill path, and for example here, see the detail behind those 33 part-time workers so I know exactly who they are, what jobs they're in, what assignments they have, and what their working hours are. And as I mentioned earlier, because I've enabled the right mouse click options, I then have that available to give me extra flexibility. So that completes this second video. Hopefully you've got a good understanding now of how we've used the techniques available within the BI platform to deliver the charts and tables that you see in the sample dashboards. You should also understand how the drill reports have been set up and some of the options around displaying a report multiple times on a dashboard page but pointing to different views of the data. You're now ready to move on to the third video.